Hey everybody, my name is JJ Warren. I'm a gay man from upstate New York where I attend Penyon United Methodist Church and where I am a certified candidate for ministry uh, in the Upper New York Annual Conference. Growing up, uh, I always went to the United Methodist Church, mostly because it was the only church in town with children's programs, but uh, early on I understood that, that the Methodist Church was a place I could call home, and as I grew up it continued to be that for me. Uh, going to Sunday school, I learned and I would come home and sing songs about Jesus all of the time. And then uh, growing up in middle school, I went to conference youth events and, and I spent more and more time and I started a youth group at my church and then I went on to lead the conference youth ministry and I, I got to be part of uh, people's journeys there and then I went on to work at a Christian summer camp, at a Methodist summer camp, uh, and, and I got to see children grow in their faith and so so the church has always been the methodist church has been where i experience god and in in the connections that we have with people i got to travel around the world to india with the united methodist mission of peace and experience god in a whole different country so the church has helped me experience god through experiencing people About high school, I started to realize that there was another part of me that I wasn't comfortable with sharing necessarily at church. Uh, we got a new pastor in my senior year and he was really great. He preached a sermon about how our church should be a model in our small town of inclusivity and how we should be a place uh, for queer people to come and feel safe. And there was a lot of backlash though. There were notes on our bulletin board at church that said, uh, these verses say this isn't okay. And, and hearing about the General Conference 2012, uh, where queer people were let down again. And then as I went as a delegate in 2016, we were let down again. And, and the hurtful language that was said there. Uh, so the, the church has hindered me in a way that I haven't always been affirmed in my full humanity, in, in my full personhood. And, and even going through the process of ordination, I've, I've been questioned. And I have a great DCOM, and, and they've been wonderful and accepting, but, but without them, uh, my calling was questioned by so many other people, and so in that way, the church has been a hindrance. Last year at our annual conference in 2017, uh, I was asked to preach at our youth service and young adult service on Saturday morning. Uh, and at that service, I decided to share a story about a girl on my campus. And my campus happens to be the most LGBTQ friendly in the nation, in the US, and, and the least religious, second least religious. And sadly, those two make sense together. And so I shared a story about how I, I shared the gospel with a girl who grew up in a conservative church. And when I shared it with her, she said, that's not a gospel I've heard before because I'm gay and my church said that wasn't okay. And in that moment, I said, I'm gay and I'm becoming a pastor in our church. And that gave her hope that church could be a home for her too. And so in that moment, I shared that story with our conference and afterwards, I was a little nervous what the response would be, and, and conservative Christians from my conference came up to me and they said, I'm conservative, but you have a calling from God and don't you let any, don't let anything stop you. And, and to hear that affirmation from conservative Christians who, who might not agree with me theologically, but who can recognize that there is a call on me as a person, that's that's something beautiful and and so that was a, a loving moment where where i felt affirmations from people who who don't even agree with me theologically when fellow united methodists discuss a church split it breaks my heart because like i said earlier i got to experience our global connection by going to india and seeing the methodist church there and and i've made friends at general conference who are from all around the world from africa uh, from germany from the uk and and it was just so great to experience this this global connection to see god at work all across the world and so when i think of a split i don't just think of a splitting structure i think of people i think of relationships that will be fractured because we can't agree to disagree lovingly. 
And so when I think of a split, my heart breaks because I think of friends that won't have that strong connection that we used to have from a church which has been all of our home. In 1968, when the Evangelical United Brethren Church and the Methodist Church came together, one bishop from each church said at the general conference that had been called, Lord of the Church, we are united in thee, in thy church now and in the United Methodist Church. From 1968 on to now, which is our 50th anniversary, we have said, God, we are your church, and we are united in thee and in this United Methodist Church, which spans the globe, which is the lar largest Protestant denomination in the world, which I say with such pride. And so my hopes for General Conference 2019 is that we'll together as a delegation choose to be contextual, that we'll say we'll remove harmful language so that churches have the ability to discern what's best for their ministry areas. Removing this language doesn't mean we're telling anyone what to believe, but we're allowing people to answer their calling, and we're allowing our connection to stay and our relationships to remain united. And that's my hope for our church that I love so much.